First of all, I'd like to kind of acknowledge a little bit about last year. It wasn't the easiest of years. Maritz, what was the biggest challenges and changes that you felt you had to overcome to being smart and sustainable in 2020? And uh, can you tell us a little bit about that from perhaps both a VASA perspective and also a project perspective? Um, yeah, two perspectives, and I can start with my own. I'm working in an organization that is also kind of helping out the companies in our region. Um uh, it has been a really difficult, stressful year, and uh, a lot of companies are doing quite badly and <laughs> they need a lot of help. So it was a very stressful year, and then working with the municipality and the city, you can say that uh, uh, priorities have been elsewhere than maybe looking into smart city solutions. So maybe getting focused, getting uh, priorities right, and trying to find resources and time to look into smart city solutions. But it's been a lot of uh, putting out fires last year regarding other issues and maybe putting a lot of uh, smart city issues on hold or at least uh, putting them to the side for a, a bit. So the largest challenge maybe in Vasa, the city, has been to kind of finding the time and finding the focus to get things moving forward and uh, then going into the uh, project's view, a little bit of the same thing. So firefighter in chief uh, in, in Vasa. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> pretty much. I, I know that you've also been helping companies themselves, giving a lot of sort of one-to-one, -one, which is which is quite time consuming as well. It's uh, it's quite a particular set of circumstances. So that's, that's understandable that things have sort of traveled a little bit down the agenda, but refocusing back on the smart cities projects and what we've got in the pipeline it's coming to an important moment for our solutions as they become more mature what's what's the most important thing that you've got uh, looking ahead for iris and uh, and and how it can help other cities and that will be the mentoring activities to really get uh, the site managers in the lighthouse cities and the fellow cities get them together and uh, also finding the right experts to bring into these meetings. And we have seen that when we find the right experts in the fellow cities, and then they get to talk to their peers in the lighthouse cities, uh, that's when magic happens, when they start talking the same language and we as kind of uh, helping horizontal work package leaders and the site managers as well, can kind of uh, sit in the back seat and just enjoy the ride and listening into these very interesting and great conversations that uh, these key experts can have between themselves regarding the demonstrations, the solutions, and the replication projects in the fellow cities. That sounds uh, that sounds like a good recipe. Yes, that is one of those occasions when walking around a room with a couple of hundred people in it, you can have those hit and miss conversations and the winning conversations. It's sometimes been tricky. So you're firefighter and uh, a matchmaker now. And uh, it, do you think that that's an issue that a lot of the other replication cities have found? Uh, you're, you're very active in the replication group working with other cities as well. Is this a, a common theme, do you think? We are dealing with people who like to see things they want to touch these things and they want to know how they're working. They really want to see the leverages and they want to see the nuts and bolts of these solutions. And not being able to do that has, of course, uh, had uh, quite a lot of uh, effect on all the uh, Lighthouse City projects in the European Union as a whole. So uh, we try to learn from each other as best we can and using uh, a lot of uh, virtual or technical digital tools uh, trying to have kind of uh, everything that just you can find and learning how to use these tools and making the most of them. So we have also seen a lot of interesting digital solutions coming up, uh, all kind of uh, 3D virtual visits. Uh, people have uh, reached a new level of how to present to different solutions in meetings online. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the, the lighthouse cities like uh, Jannaberg Science Park and uh, Gothenburg have had an awful lot of virtual uh, visits and uh, the, the 3D digital twins and uh, in Utrecht they've had the sort of decision-making box for citizen engagement and uh, I think maybe when 
those that new knowledge and our ability to meet sort of come back together again they'll 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 make a formidable combination hopefully for uh, getting things accelerated and in all of these tasks perhaps just thinking back to the project now um you've got a lot coming up on your plate for iris and what what do you need from the project partners and what's the best way, way that they can support and interact our kind of drive for upscaling and replication? So we'll plan more deep dive peer-to-peer -peer meetings, digging out the key experts in all cities, but also to maybe have this uh, more frequent reaching out to each other uh, moments. Uh, we're maybe looking into more uh, site managers and fellow cities and lighthouse cities to just asking each other things, small, simple things, communicating to get these things forward. I hear things that, well, we have something that could be interesting of them, but they're not asking us about it. Well, just throw them a message and say, well, we heard you're doing something like this and we have something that may be of interest. Thanks very much, Maritz. Thank you. Great. Call me. Yeah, oh, cool. <laughs>